All right, everyone, welcome to the midweek market wrap up for Stats Edge Trading with myself, Michael Noss, Chartered Market Technician. So, in the midweek and the end of the week, we slow things down a bit and we kind of go over a lot of what's going on in all of these markets crypto, FX, equity, try to figure out what's going to happen into the end of the week reviewing for ourselves what's happened so far this week so we can make plans and do watch lists. If you want to make sure you get everything you're seeing here, email directly to you along with access to my entire watch list, annotated charts for what it is that I'm looking at. Make sure you go to statsedgetrading.com and sign up for the email list there. I don't sell the email or anything to anyone. Just a way for me to get in contact with you guys wherever you are if I end up doing something cool. Um, as always, too, uh, trade ideas where I do my scanning and alerting and, and charting. So if you want access to that, again, use Stats Edge for 15% off on checkout. Definitely check it out. They're doing a test drive coming up soon where you get two weeks for 11 bucks. Give it a shot. I'm absolutely in love with the new web version where we've been building. It's just a fantastic product. So without further ado, into the charts, starting here with Bitcoin, hit the 200 day moving average again, selling off of that 200 day moving average, still trapped within this range. So I've just been mentioned, I'm taking some shorter term trades, I took a short here, took some profit here and then got stopped out in the rest. I did take a little short as it broke down here. I'm probably going to take some profit pretty soon because Bitcoin just isn't moving. It's not, it's stuck within this range from 31,000 down to 25,000. So while that's what the market is giving me, I'm going to trade quickly around it. If the market ends up breaking out of one of these ranges and going from a range mode into a trend mode, I'm going to make that trade. It just kind of is what it is. You got to give what the market is giving you. You got to take, I guess, what the market is giving you because you can't control it. So no need fighting that. So some currencies to take a look at. We have Aussie CAD. I've been talking about this for a while, how we had this kind of liquidity grab or bear trap or whatever you want to call it under this low right here. You can see that low happened here. And then we cut above it. I've been on the shorter term time frame, long bias. I'm liking that. If we can get over this little range right here, this resistance zone, I'm going to probably hold, try to get a, a good trade on a lower time frame, and to see if I can hold some for a move, maybe up to the 200 day or something. On Aussie CAD. Now on the Euro, we've been watching the Euro here for this level going back a while. And then also the anchored view app from the low here on Euro. Again, I've been trading this from the long side. It's looking good. It's still right above this anchored view app right now. If we go into the weekly chart, even though it's not the end of the week, you can see I talked uh, last weekend about how we had this double bottoming tail for the Euro under this zone. We kind of gapped below it and then just rallied hard. So I would expect to see this continue at least a little bit. Um, just a relief rally from this move right here. So that's what I'm looking for on that one. We also have USD JPY looking kind of interesting here. I'm going to give the same caveat I did last time where, yes, this looks like a bull flag and it looks like we're going to break out higher. We're holding the anchored VWAP from this level. A lot of things look bullish on this chart. However, the Bank of Japan is kind of saying, hey, we're going to start defending our currency because it's just gotten killed for a long time. So just make sure you have your stops set on that one. So now we're going to take a look here. This is the a great little thing that Trade Ideas has. Just a heat map of all the sectors. You can see XLRE, TLT, and XLU moving higher. These sectors right here moving higher together are interesting to me, and I'll show you why when we get into the charts. But they've been beaten up incredibly, and now they're moving higher. So one thing I've been talking about a lot on Twitter and uh you know, if you're signed up to the email list every night, there are links there for my Twitter threads, all of this. Uh, if anything's happening in real time, I'm doing posts on those. Um, and then once a day, I kind of email the culmination of my thoughts. I don't want to email you guys like 20 times a day. So make sure you're following me on those as well as YouTube and all of that. We have this gap right here. And we've been running up and it's roughly this this low and it's roughly this low as well. So we have a big area here that we've been rallying into. We had a topping tail on Friday. 
and then we had a little inside day today. Now we have CPI tomorrow. I think that will shift us one way or the other. But if we do start to fail and, and we kind of get below this candles low right here, I think there's a chance we could continue lower. Um, and which is fine, because if we bounce somewhere before this low right here, then I think everything's kind of still on and still good to go. If we if we pull back a little bit here, and then we start to rally higher again, then that's just great. It confirms that there are buyers that missed this rally right here that are looking for a retracement in which to bounce. Um, that I, I would imagine that could be what happened, but we could just climb the wall of worry and we could just rally higher here as well. So I'm a lot in cash waiting for tomorrow's CPI to get out of the way. We had FOMC stuff today. We had PPI. There was a whole bunch of junk going on. Um, so I took a big nap instead of looking at a lot of things. So, so I want to talk about how we had XLU, which is utilities, which just got completely destroyed with the rising rates, doing a massive bounce back. We also had TLT. Same thing, right? TLT has just been bleeding for a very long time here and a big bounce in TLT. And then we also had, what was it? XLRE, which is the real estate. XLRE, which is the real estate, uh, not XLE, XLRE, which is our real estate ETF doing the same thing. So these are, we're seeing instead of the leaders in with technology and AI and all this stuff continuing to push higher and pull, pushing the market higher, we actually have the bottom. We have the ones who've gotten killed the most putting in this oversold bounce. And this combines actually with a tweet that I saw uh, that tracks the long short exposure of CTAs or people who trade uh, trend trading futures. And they were as short as they've ever been going into this week. So I wonder if some of this is that alleviation of a short squeeze. So we may be seeing a bit of a market wise short squeeze, which makes me think that if we fill that gap on the spy, we could run higher, because there's a lot of people that are potentially caught offside in this market. And I think we're seeing that, right? So look at the giant bounces I've just shown you in these. And then let's just go and look at XLK. And XLK, although moving higher, isn't getting that insane bounce that the rest of them, this just more looks like the overall market. It's not getting this massive rally and this relative strength coming off the bottom that I'm seeing in the rest of those things. So it's very interesting just to look at here. Uh, XLC is another one. So this is our communications, a lot of um, social medias and things in XL. XLC. Very interesting that it's been putting in this range for the longest time. It's up near the top of that range, but it did take a long time to get there. So I wouldn't be shocked to see some sort of a pullback uh, before we move higher on this one. So the leaders are looking a little bit exhausted, but the laggers are really rallying and that's what's pushing up this market. So a couple names um, that I want to look at here. Uh, AESI. I want to go through this. This is one that I'm watching for an anchor view app pullback. If you anchor a view app to this major low right in here, it's done an amazing job of acting as support for a while. And we're sitting there right now. Now this is in the oil sector space. And we've had a pretty big pullback on this one into an area of support right here and into that anchored view app. So I'm watching this one for some continuation, see if we get a bounce off that. Shopify, I'm key, I'm adding to the list again, I removed it. I don't like that this one's been, not Shopify, Spotify. Uh, Spotify has been a laggard here in the overall tech sector. Uh, however, it is just a nice looking pattern where it's getting very, very tight in through here. So I'm looking for a close above 160 on this one to get involved. Wrong under this area right there. Simple breakout play. Now this Spear one, Sphere, which is the um, that orb that you're seeing everywhere, in Vegas, I was in Vegas doing a presentation two weeks ago and I saw it, it's actually pretty amazing. Interesting play, 9% uh, short float, it's a fairly new, um, new issue, it's a fairly low float company, uh, with only, it's only worth a billion dollars and I think the actual sphere itself, it costs like four billion to make, 
But I like the fact that it gapped up here on the U2 news. They had a concert in there. But then it's pulled back, and so far it's been holding this gap. So I'm looking to see a break back up and a close above 40 bucks on this name. If we sell below here, then I'm just going to move on with my life. Uh, but I just think this could be a nice little gap and then retracement and continuation on this play. Uh, two more to watch here. We have VTEX and VTEX here is another AVWAP play, but an AVWAP from this massive low and this volume spike right here. You can see this one day, even though it didn't do much, it did an incredible amount of volume. And you kind of draw that out and it's been acting as support right in this area. So above five bucks, I like the look of this one, wrong at like 475. So it's a really small trade with a really small risk, knowing that you know low priced things like this can go nuts. Um, but just trying to see if, you know, if we get a bounce to six, that's an amazing percentage return. And then last, I'm looking here at Uber. And Uber is just a traditional, you know, you could call this a, a cup and handle or a double bottom or even just a, yeah, it's probably draw. That's probably the easiest to, to see. But basically just getting very tight in through here. It's been strong recently and it's just holding this zone. So if we can get above this area for a breakout on Uber, I think we could potentially see new highs if we go to the weekly chart, right? This area going back for a long time has been a big resistance zone. So if we get above that on the weekly chart, maybe we take a shot here at highs at 60. Uh, so just a setup that I like on the weekly chart is really, I think, where you can potentially see the cup and handle pattern, right? Here's your big cup right to this area right here. And then we have this tightening pattern right here on Uber. So potential cup and handle going on. I like these patterns. Four moves higher. So thank you guys for coming by. Again, sign up to the email list. Share it. The likes, the comments, I appreciate them greatly. The channel has been growing. My social media presence has been growing. I think I'm adding value to you guys if you agree. Again, just share it around. I appreciate that very much, and I will talk to you guys soon.